Wonderful. Oh, uh, excuse me. Molly. <laughs> Good morning. Hi. Well, who's this? It's Raven. How are you? Thought maybe you'd like to get together and talk about our baby. <laughs> you've heard the news by now that mother and baby have had a very happy reunion. Um, Raven, where are you? Listen, has Logan come over there? I'm sure he probably came right over with the news. Listen, if you talk to him, tell him that Jamie's just fine and that he's very, very happy to be with his mommy. Raven, I don't have to tell you that Logan is very upset about what you did. What did I do? I went to the hospital to pick up my baby. I felt that he needed a mother's tender, loving care after being so sick. Now, you, you have to agree with that. What you did was unfair, and it was also a dirty trick. It would have been a lot less fair to, to bring him to a babysitter or to some uh, hired policeman like Logan did. I mean, he's much better off with me. How is he? Aside from having been sick, you haven't seen him in months. Mm, babies don't forget their mommies. <laughs> you just wait and see. Look, we have so much in common now. We're both single mothers. We should get together and have a um, yeah, I uh, would like to get together. We can talk about all this. Well, let's do it tonight. I could come over to your place. Well, I don't really have a place yet. It's just temporary. So, uh, maybe I'd better visit with you. Well, sure. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing Jamie again. Well, Jamie's not coming. I'm going to give him a babysitter. So, uh, I'll see you about eight, okay? Uh, uh, yeah. Bye. Bye. Well, apparently she's still in town. It doesn't appear as though she's going to tell anyone where. Well, Raven, we weren't exactly sure we'd ever see you again. Why not? I live in Monticello. I have no intention of moving. Raven, I heard about your little caper at the hospital yesterday. Oh, that's cute. I've never heard Jamie call the little caper before. Raven, you know what you did wasn't exactly legal. It wasn't. I thought it was perfectly legal for a mother to go in the hospital and pick up her son. Where are you living now, now that you've checked out of the hotel suite? Sounds like you've been looking for me, Derek. I hope it was personal. Where are you staying, Raven? I hope you don't mind my asking. Oh, not at all. I didn't know you were interested, too. I moved into this lovely little apartment. It's furnished. It has a backyard so Jamie can play. I think the two of us are going to be real happy. What about your husband? We're separated. You knew that. I thought you told me he was one of your brighter officers. Raven, I hope you don't think that keeping Jamie is going to be as easy as it was taking him out of the hospital. Jamie hasn't protested. He loves his mommy. If you don't believe me, ask him. He doesn't talk very much, but he says mommy. It's real cute. Raven, what did you come down here for? What do you want from the police? I want what every other law-abiding citizen wants. A little protection. Against what? Threats. Like uh, what the detective just did. Wait a minute. Look, Raven. Look, I know why you're so upset because we took away your babysitting job. Now you and Deborah Saxon can't moonlight anymore. Can you imagine what went on there? Steve, that's okay. That's all right. Goodbye, Detective. Listen, if I ever ask for a police officer, don't send him, okay? Let me ask you one more time. What do you want here? I already told you and I meant it. Protection. I want you and everybody else to know that I will not stand for any threats against me or my baby. And I'm just making an official notice that I will sue anyone who tries to interfere with my life, be it a police officer or the district attorney. Has anybody made threats? No, not yet, but I just wanted to warn you. If anyone tries to take my baby by force, I will scream bloody murder so loud they will hear me in the Supreme Court building. That's not going to happen. Nobody's going to do anything like that, least of all one of my officers. Oh, really? Logan and one of your police officers tried it last night, and I know Logan will try it again. I doubt that very much. Well, he better not. And I think maybe you should tell him that as a friend. You see, he has no legal rights, and any attempt to kidnap Jamie will be just that kidnapping. Now, he has a lot to lose, including his freedom, so uh, why don't you just tell him to stay away? I'll keep your advice. Oh, no, not you. I don't want you to stay away. Look, Raven, you'll have wait, to excuse wait, me. Wait, Derek. Derek. Look, don't be mad at me, okay? I, I know I was a little bit selfish before, but honestly, I like you for yourself, and you are still the most attractive man I've met in a long time. You like my perfume? It is the uh, lingering kind, just so 
You'll be reminded of me the rest of the day. Why don't you go to sleep with the teddy bear, huh? Sleep nice and sleep. I'll teach you a game of cards afterwards if you go to sleep, huh? How's that? You want to go? Jimmy, please. Ah, oh, thank God. Another ten minutes and I would have called back the Monticello Police Force. What's the matter, Daddy? Is baby too much for you? I told you I'm no good with babies. Yes, unless the baby is a female and over 17 years old, right? Take, take, baby, okay? Just, Raven, never ask me to do this again, will you? I'll commit a crime for you, but never babysit again, okay? He's so adorable. He's such a little angel, aren't you? Well, the little angel was a perfect devil for most of the time you were gone. It's probably because he was hungry or wet. Ah, yes, he needs changing. Well, I will do that and put him to bed like the good little mommy that I am. Uh, Braven, you, uh, didn't happen to bring any liquor with you when you moved, did you? Yes, I did. It's uh, in a box somewhere. You'll have to look for it. Well, I've been looking all day. Well, look some more. Why do you have to drink this early in the day? <laughs> After my experience, I need it desperately. You know, it's a wonder babies ever grow up. I mean, this kid all alone, going from person to person. It's a wonder mankind ever survived. Babies are wonderful, aren't they, Jamie? Ah, uh, Eureka. What? Nothing, nothing. I see you found your baby bottle. Well, you never told me what you did this morning. Where that uh, impossible, urgent errand led you. I went to see Derek Mallory. You what? Yeah, the chief of police. He looks so handsome behind that desk. He has such an air of authority. I love that in a man. I just, I adore it. I went there on business. What business? I wanted to make sure none of his detectives decided to steal Jamie back because I know that's just what they're thinking of doing. Look, I doubt that very much. They're police officers. They could lose their jobs. Well, let's just say I wanted to uh, buy some insurance. Oh, yes, that's more like it, isn't it? That's why you want Chief Mallory on your side as insurance. The more men you keep on your string, the better, right? It never hurts to make friends. Well, listen to me, Ray. Let me tell you something. Don't get too friendly. I expect exclusive rights. Do you know what exclusive means? Let go of me. Let go of me! You men are all alike. There's not one of you that doesn't believe in a double standard. I have my standards all right, but they don't include you with Chief Mallory or Logan Swift or the Monticello soccer team. All right, that was an exaggeration. You probably don't even like soccer. Elliot, the only reason I'm interested in Derek Mallory is because he's the chief of police and a friend of Logan's. A spy in the enemy camp. Well, you never know how someone might be used. I know about myself. I don't use you. Except for one thing. That's why you're intrigued with Mallory, because he's playing hard to get. Well, maybe you should play that game a little more, huh? <laughs> now see what you did? You went and made him cry. Well, why don't you go and see what he wants? No, silly. Don't you know anything about raising a baby? You shouldn't go running every time they cry because that just spoils them. Well, obviously somebody always listened to your cries. They did not. I was completely ignored. If you think my mother went running for me all the time, you are out of your mind. She, uh, pretended that I wasn't even born. She used to say that she was much too young to have a baby. She would go screaming at Daddy that he made her old before her time. Oh, he probably had something to do with it. My daddy was a prince. He was much too good for her. The reason she got her millions and millions is because she sent him to an early grave. There. He stopped. 
when I get my money back, that's going to be the way my daddy intended it to be. You're trembling. I was the only one he ever loved. You've got everything you want. No, I don't. I need that letter. That letter I gave to April. I have to find it. And I have to destroy it. Please. Please help me. <sighs> April, are you really sure you want to sell that lovely house of yours? Yes, the house is definitely on the market. I just hope the right people buy it. That's all. That's that's all that's really important to me. Yes, of course. I'm sure it is. I don't know, Geraldine. It may sound really silly, but I just can't picture people in that place who don't get along or are fighting all the time. Not, not after all the love that I know what used to be in that place. The dream house for the dream couple. Well, that would be the ideal resolution. Great idea. Well, listen, I'm really sorry for all of these interruptions. Hello? Oh, hi. I'm so glad you're home. Oh, Raven. Hello. Hi. Look, I'm on my way over. You didn't forget about our date, did you? Oh, no, of course not. I'm rather looking forward to it. Good, me too. We'll talk about the kids. Fine. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Raven is, uh, flying up for the evening. I didn't realize you and Raven were socializing. We're not, Geraldine. I'm just very curious to know about Jamie, to know how he is and what she plans on doing with him now that she has him. I'd like to know that myself. I know you would. I know how you care about Jamie. If you don't mind, my dear, I think I'd like to stay. Dancing shoes too far back in the closet. I think there's a possibility that we could open this weekend. You know, I think you're going to have half the population of Monticello standing in line to get in here. Hopefully. However, don't get too wrapped up in your new toy because uh, you have a little something to do tonight, remember? I know what you're talking about, Raven, but you have to realize that the unicorn is my first priority. Don't you go back on your word? Never forgive you. I don't remember giving you my word. Everyone knows when I blow in your ear, you follow me. Let me switch off the music. I hope you don't intend staying out too late tonight. If you think you're going to have me in bed by 9 o'clock, forget it. It's just that I'm a little concerned about that babysitter you got for Jamie. Gloria's fine. Jamie will be okay. How can you be so unconcerned? <laughs> I really feel sorry for that little boy. Elliot, the doctor said Jamie is just fine. He's going to grow up to be a very big, strong boy. Oh, you left out rich. <laughs> but there is the possibility that Jamie will reach his majority before the big payoff comes his way. And then the decision on how to use his money will be his and his alone. He'll be a good son. He won't forget his dear old lady. Well, tell me something, Raven. What if he remembers how his mother treated him during his formative years? What if he shares Logan's opinion of you? He could cut you off without a cent. This conversation is getting absurd. Besides, you don't have any more time. I have to make a phone call, and why don't you just run along and I'll let myself out? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wish me luck. Good luck. Mallory. I knew you'd be in your office. What can I do for you, Raven? I'm kind of busy. I just wanted to call and let you know why I got so upset in your office this afternoon. You were rather upset, weren't you? And understandably so. 
Logan was livid when he found out that I had the kid, and I just wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to enlist your detectives to form some sort of plot to get him back. Now, I've told you that none of my officers are going to do anything illegal against you or your son. Thank you, Derek. I'm just doing my job. Well, I hope you don't think that I was trying to suggest that you were doing anything illegal. I mean, I don't want to offend you. Raven, don't concern yourself about offending me. You don't sound as if you've accepted my apology. I forgave you. Then how about dinner next week? Raven, I don't think that'd be a very good idea. Come on, Derek, I made a mistake. Are you going to hold a grudge against me or what? I'll think about it. It would mean a lot to me. Please say you will. All right, all right, it's a date. Look, there's somebody knocking at my door. I'll have to get back to you tomorrow. Told me it was just going to be the two of us. What is she doing here? Raven, Geraldine and I were discussing station matters when she found out you were coming. She asked me if she could stay because she was very interested to hear how Jamie is doing. I have nothing to say to her. <sighs> Some friend you turned out to be. Raven, we can discuss this rather calmly. I simply want you to know, Raven, that I find your behavior utterly reprehensible. You have managed to disturb any number of lives simply to satisfy some selfish motive of your own. You have no right to judge me like that. It's none of your damn business. On the contrary. If it has to do with Logan and that baby, it is my business, damned or otherwise. I have a good mind to write Nadine. I have no doubt your mother would be very much interested in finding out exactly how her daughter is spending her time. Don't you dare do that. Well, after all... Nobody on this side of the Atlantic has been able to talk any sense into you. Perhaps she can. What are you going to say to her? That I love Jamie so much I couldn't bear to be without him? That for the first time in my life I know exactly what it is I want to be a mother to my child? Not a very convincing performance, Raven, so don't wait for applause. Those are the reasons I took Jamie, and I'll swear to it on my mother's life. Raven, Geraldine is only interested in Jamie's welfare. You have to understand that. I've already talked to Nadine anyway. I told her exactly what happened and why. And does she know there are two sides to the story? If you write her a letter with some piece of fiction, it's going to upset her a great deal. I can assure you I have no desire to inform Nadine that Raven is acting like the same old Raven. But Jamie is her grandson, and she has a right to know. Look, Nadine has enough problems right now. She doesn't need you to add to them. She hasn't been feeling very well. I didn't know that Nadine had been ill, but then I haven't heard from her in some time. Well, that's probably why she didn't want to upset you. And if you send her a letter giving her all this conflicting advice, she's, she's going to get so upset it might kill her. Somehow. I don't think that's likely. But all right, Raven, I'll leave Nadine out of this. Thank you. Please, put aside this childish desire for revenge and give Logan back his son. Is it so unfathomable to you that I should want to raise my own baby? Oh, uh, considering your past behavior, I don't think you can blame anyone for being skeptical. I can't believe that you want this responsibility. Well, I do, and you just wait and see. I'm going to be the best mother in the world. And if you're that conscientious, then what are you doing here? Why aren't you home with Jamie where you belong? I have a very competent nurse babysitting for Jamie. I see. Well, if you'll excuse me, I think I'd better go. I don't see that anything can be accomplished here this evening. April. I hope you'll forgive this little display. Perhaps we can meet again sometime later in the week. I'll call you tomorrow. We'll set a time. Raven. Let me give you a little piece of advice before I go. Be very careful what you do in this situation. Or so help me you'll live to regret it. Is that a threat? <laughs> no, my dear. That is a promise. Sometimes I feel like the whole world is against me, and I really don't want to be against the entire world, but that's the way it goes. Raven, the whole time you were in England... Geraldine and Logan took care of Jamie. They are both extremely attached to that baby. You're on their side? I am on no one's side. Look, I'll tell you one thing, though. 
It upsets me tremendously to see how depressed Logan is about this whole sordid mess. He worries about Jamie constantly. Well, I want to be reasonable about it. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to give him visitation rights. Oh, well, Raven, that's just too generous of you. April, I am simply a mother who loves her baby and wants to raise him. Is there anything so terrible about that? No. You're a mother you should understand. I personally dread the thought of Julia ever being away from me. Well, if I lose Jamie, I'll just want to curl up and die. I don't want him to take my baby away from me. Well, that is something that you have to sit down with Logan and decide between yourselves. You could help me if you wanted. Oh, come on, me. Yes, you could give me that letter that I gave you. It would make all the difference in the world. Would you do that for me? Look, you must have it. It's much too important a piece of information to just throw away. Raven, to be perfectly honest with you, I have absolutely no idea where that letter is. Can't you find it? It would mean so much to me. Oh, I'm sure it would. April, I am desperate to get that letter. I am begging you. Raven, that letter could turn up absolutely anywhere. And if it turns up in the custody court, the judge will think I intended to give Jamie away and I'll never see him again. That's right. That letter doesn't put you in a good light, does it? All right, I made a mistake. Do I deserve to be punished like this? Come on, you're a mother. Surely you understand. Please, you can't refuse me. Please. Don't start that again. I told you the house was empty. So was every closet and every drawer, stark naked. I'm sure your friend April knows what you have in mind. Don't be ridiculous. In all likelihood, that letter you want so badly is locked up in a safety deposit vault at some bank. No, it isn't. I've already talked to April about the letter. She didn't give any indication that it was among her valuables. It's only valuable to me. Correction. It's more valuable to your husband. That's why I have to get it back. Not if he gets it first. He's probably already asked her for it. That's why he's being so nice to April. Thinks he can wheedle it out of her. He'll probably succeed. Mm -mm. He doesn't have it. I have to get that letter and tear it into a million pieces. I can't make my move until then. What move? I think it might be a little easier if Jamie and I move out of town. I wouldn't like that, Raven. You could come with me. Surely there must be something more to keep you in this town than a damned letter. No, I can't come with you. I have the unicorn to take care of. It opens in a few days. It's very important to you, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, this is very important to me, too. Raven, there is something more important to me than that unicorn. You know something? Sometimes your lips are like ice. Uh, just a minute. <clears throat> Come in. Hi. 
Well, I'm sorry about all the intrigue, but uh, I heard Logan through the office door, and I thought it probably wouldn't be a good time for a visit. Just what is the reason of this visit? Unless you came here to return that boy which you stole illegally from the hotel. Stop it! You know very well I didn't do anything illegal. Mrs. Swift, I don't think you realize what trouble you're in. I have an appointment in an hour with a judge, and we're going to talk about you, and when we are done, I think he's going to recommend that you go to jail. Cliff, you don't scare me. <laughs> Besides, I didn't come here to talk about that. You didn't? No. I came here to see you. I wanted to see what you look like in this old office of Draper's. Oh. What do you think? I think you look terrific. You look a lot better than Draper did. Oh, you think I do? You do? You look like a very high-powered attorney. Draper always sort of looked like a little boy trying to play a big executive. You wouldn't be trying to flatter me now, would you? Me? Mrs. Swift, if you think you can get around me that easy, come in here wearing some clinging dress and uh, smell up my office with expensive perfume, I think you're crazy. You like it? It's not going to work. I'm going to go find a judge and he's going to give you two choices. Give back that baby or go to jail. I was real disappointed when I didn't hear from you. Oh, you'll hear from me, believe me. Clifford, I do not mean as an attorney. You know, I thought the last time we met that there was a little bit of electricity there. Wait, now. Mrs. Swift, I've heard all about you. I know exactly what you're trying to do here. I'm just a little disappointed you didn't ask me out. Well, how could I ask you out? Your husband is my client. And he's my best friend, too. Aha. Uh -huh. So you've got that assignment and Draper's old office, huh? Look, uh, Mrs. Swift, I don't think this is going to look very good if you're Raven, here. Raven, I told you to call me Raven. Now, look, <clears throat> if you're not interested in a social dinner, how about a business dinner? What do you mean? You're Logan's attorney. Don't you think you should try to find some reasonable out-of-court settlement for this whole thing? Oh, that would be wonderful, sure. That is, of course, if you're willing to be reasonable. Well, you'll have to take me out and see, won't you? I don't think that this is a very good Cliff, idea now. Cliff. This is my new number. Take it, come on. So give me a call sometime, okay? Counselor. Yes? Oh, what does she want here? All right, I suppose we're, we're through. Send her in. She's back. Don't tell me. Raven. Yes, now whatever you do, don't cross swords with her here. Maybe she's ready to see reason on this baby matter. Okay, I promise I don't say a word to her. I'd sure like to kill her with a look. Oh, hello. Hi, Deborah. Well, you sure look nice. What is this, the new uh, police uniform, or is it yours? <laughs> well, don't you look so worried. I didn't come here to make more demands on the police force. I just wanted to ask you to take me to dinner. <laughs> I'm sorry, Raven. I'm too busy tonight. Maybe some other time. Oh, but I can't go another time. I mean, I have to go tonight. Can't you, uh, can't you work tomorrow? Look, this will give me a chance to tell you my side of the story. I'm sure you already know Logan's. All right, maybe so. Maybe I could work tomorrow night. It's very nice of you to do this, Derek. That's my forgiving nature. Oh, I don't think you're the forgiving type, but that's one of the things I like about you. Is it? Mm-hmm. See, I don't think you let people push you around, or you wouldn't have the kind of job you do. Everybody has their limits. God knows I've got mine. And I pushed you right to the edge of those limitations, didn't I? <laughs> oh, I, can't, I can't believe I did that. I actually tried to talk you into using your influence as chief of police to call off your detectives. <laughs> Derek, I am very, very sorry. So, how do you like taking care of Jamie yourself? I like it a lot, I really do. Doesn't seem to interfere with your social life. No, I have a babysitter. And it's not an armed policeman. She's a trained nurse. Is she? Mm-hmm. I don't see why having a baby should interfere with one's private life. 
I mean, look at Logan, for heaven's sake. He works every day, nights sometimes. I'm sure he partied all he wanted to, even when Jamie was here. As a matter of fact, I probably spend more time with Jamie than Logan ever did. I don't want to argue. I don't want to argue either. As a matter of fact, I don't even want to talk about Logan. He's not worth it. Logan's still my friend, Raven. This dinner isn't going to change that. Okay. You can think of him as your friend, but just don't think of him as my husband, okay? Because he's that in name only. We were never really right for each other. Well, that separation was the only answer for the two of you. It's just too bad there had to be a baby in the picture. Well, there was a baby, and he's going to stay with me. And someday, I'll find him the daddy he deserves. And the man that I need. Excuse me. Sir, your table is ready in the back. Table in the back? Yes, sir. Oh, it's a lousy table. What's wrong with this table here? Anybody got it? No, you can have that. Okay, send our drinks over. Okay. Right. You see, Derek, I need a strong man, and most of the men I know are weaklings. Well, that doesn't sound like my description of Logan. Well, he might be very strong when he's with you, but uh, there are many ways that men show their weakness. Oh. Well, look, if Logan had really cared about me, he would have handled me differently. How? <laughs> well, he wouldn't have let me get away with as many things as I got away with. Raven, you've, you've lost me. <laughs> well, see, when I was a child, my daddy used to punish me every time I did something wrong. He would stand for none of that childish nonsense. And so I sort of knew what I could do and what I couldn't do. So is that what you're looking for in a husband? A stern father? No. I don't think I have a father fixation. It's just that if Kevin Jameson and Logan Swift had an ounce of the strength that my daddy had... Raven, you're kidding yourself. You think you want the kind of man who can keep you in line. But I've got the feeling if anybody tried to put a collar around that pretty neck of yours, you'd scream bloody murder. That's true, I would. <laughs> Even if it were a diamond collar. Matter of fact, I did get a little rebellious toward Daddy. I hope you got spanked for it. <laughs> no, I didn't. Daddy never spanked me. He would never hurt me physically. That wasn't his way. Besides, I was Daddy's little baby girl. <laughs> That's why my mother was very jealous. We never got along. That's why we still don't get along. Your father's passed away now, isn't he? Ah, <sighs> yes. Mother remarried. Yeah, I know, though. Draper Scott's father, he told me the story. Mm. You have a very good memory. I guess Lee's chief has to have a very good memory. He also has to be very strong. I like that. Before you start getting any ideas that I'd make the ideal husband, let me remind you about my own unsuccessful marriage. Your wife must have been a fool. No, she was just a girl. Maybe a little bit too young to be married yet. Maybe a little too spoiled to be married at all. But I guess there were faults on both sides. Man, you see, I am the forgiving type. That's okay. Just so you forgive me. Especially for what I did to your uh, friend. You're stealing Jamie from the hospital? It's not up to me to forgive you for that. But I don't like what you did. I'm sure you don't. You must realize just how badly Logan feels about not having his son with him anymore. He knows what he can do about it. I'm not even sure what he can do about it. He'll probably take some kind of legal action. I'm sure he's considering all his possibilities, yes. Well, you are his friend. He'll probably talk to you about it, and when he does, maybe... Uh... Maybe you could give him some good advice. Don't get me involved in this, Raven. Okay. <laughs> okay. Look, I'm going to go call my babysitter right now, but I'll be right back. Okay. okay. Unicorn! Oh, yeah, yeah, he's here. That lovely lady, Mr. D. Hello. Hi, baby. How are you? 
Oh, there's the little mother. How's the little boy doing? He is just as good as gold. As a matter of fact, I'm sitting right here looking at him playing his playpen. Well, I'm in my own playpen. Uh, but I'll be finished in about half an hour, so why don't I come by and pick you up? Now, look, that's what I called you about. I am exhausted. This kid has so much energy, I've not stopped running around for eight hours. Oh, poor baby. You need a little relaxation. That's true. See, I was thinking of feeding him and putting him, him to bed and then uh, washing my hair and going to bed myself. You know, I, I want to look real good for that opening. Well, if that's the way you want it. Oh, I knew you'd understand. So I have to go deal with him right now, but uh, I'll talk to you real soon, okay? Bye-bye. <sighs> Better call the babysitter. No, I was in the bathroom, Mrs. Swift. But you don't have to worry about Jamie. He's fine. Well, I hope he stays that way. Yeah. Look, uh, I'll be home in a couple of hours, okay? Oh, sure, Mrs. Swift. Bye. Well, now, where were we? <laughs> <laughs> Seems as though a harmony is hard to find Always on our mind In frustrated days Pass without sight The edge of night As we watch our hearts Trying to hold the tenderness 